Hello, welcome back to the second part of our course on how to use and finance nature-based solutions. In this video lesson, you'll learn a four-step process for using MBS in your project development. So you can think about MBS and development planning when you're laying the groundwork for recovering from some disaster, uh, like the ideas of green recovery and build back better underline. Or if you find out there is not enough funding for gray infrastructure, then you might see NBS provides a cheaper option and more sustainable option. So the four steps of this process are number one, planning. Number two, financing. Number three, implementation. So we'll introduce tools that can be useful for the implementation phase. Uh, and finally, four is monitoring and evaluation. So later we'll go deeper into how to evaluate your NBS. OK, let's now look closely into each of these four steps for using MBS in your project development. OK, for planning, the first and most important milestone is to properly plan MBS projects. So you should clearly identify the benefits of MBS for your priority policy area, and then integrate the MBS into related standard policies and plans uh, in this policy area. So there are a lot of possibilities for integrating NBS into things like urban development plans, rural development plans, disaster risk management plans, and climate change adaptation plans. First, it's necessary to review the objectives envisioned by each plan or strategy, and then consider how MBS could contribute to these objectives. So are there any gray infrastructure proposals that could be better implemented as NBS? Uh, assess the benefits and co-benefits of ecosystem restoration and conservation and strategically include MBS in regional and municipal budgetary planning and key local plans. So in the case of the Miyagi Ecoton, the researchers of the Ecoton Monitoring Network started a vegetation survey at the Ecoton of Shinhama three months after the tsunami of the 2011 Great Earthquake Disaster of East Japan. Interestingly, the ecosystem seemed to be recovering there. Meanwhile, they were concerned that the new seawall development plan by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transportation and Tourism would eliminate ecotones. They persuaded the ministry to set back the seawall so that they could continue to monitor the ecoton in Shinhama. あの、復興のですね、after a painstaking discussion, they successfully achieved the pilot monitoring site of the Ikoton in Shinhama. And prior to the construction of the base embankment, they had an experimental area where they were able to continue to conduct vegetation surveys. The biggest challenge was communication with several stakeholders. In the coastal zone, the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Forest Agency, the Municipal Government, and Prefectural Government were working in silos and coordinating with difficulties. Researchers suggested that integrated coastal zone management would be important as it would facilitate recovery processes that harmonize with the coastal ecosystem. In the planning stage, they also involved local people. Local people were not initially aware of the importance of ecosystem restoration, and rather they desired that the seawall be constructed. So the researchers faced the dilemma of saving lives versus ecosystem conservation. Nevertheless, they tried to convince local people by distributing flyers to inform them about the importance of the coastal ecosystem. And thanks to these researchers' engagement, local people came to realize the ecological, cultural, and historical values of their local ecosystems, and they began to support the coastal ecotone. Then, they started locally-led activities to learn more by themselves and disseminated the value of nature to the public. Their collective voice prompted the government to recognize the Ecotone project in Shinhama. And likewise, local government officers greatly supported the activities by local people, and their attitudes gave a good impression to the local people. So how to finance a project is one of the most critical parts of the process, and also one of the most difficult. 
What is interesting to note here is that by including NBS in your projects, plans, activities, uh, you'll be able to access additional funding sources that support biodiversity conservation. And this is because of the additional benefits your project will generate that are related to conservation. In summary, NBS mean that you can access more money for your projects. But how can you access these funds? You need to identify your financial strategy. Importantly, you should bear in mind that a nature-based solution is not always the best way to solve your issue or achieve a policy priority. Also, a hybrid approach that combines gray and green solutions can be an optimal arrangement. If you decide to raise funds for MBS, domestic funds should be the first option to consider. If there are accessible domestic funds for MBS, you should start thinking about how to access these domestic funds. An advantage of MBS is they're relatively low cost in comparison to other types of solutions, which allows local communities to implement the solution even if their budget is very limited. If domestic funds are not available to you, the next option is private capital. So if there are private entities who are keen to solve your problem with a nature-based approach, try to create a public-private partnership. If this does not work out either, your next option could be accessing external financing. The case of the Miyagi Ecotom, uh, for financing, there was not a single funding resource to cover the entire Ecotom project. So the Ministry of Infrastructure invested in seawall development, which was part of the recovery plan, and also covered the extra cost for the setback for Ecotom restoration. Uh, meanwhile, monitoring the Ecotom was financed by research funds from the Ministry of Education, Cultural Sports, Science and Technology. So the Ecotone and the ecosystem restoration activities by local people provided researchers with lots of research opportunities, both for natural and social sciences, uh, which is one of the success factors in securing funding. Once MBS are well identified and you decide to access external financing, the next biggest mission is to have your project proposal accepted by donors. The process to apply to the funds of different donors varies, but in all cases, you'll need to prepare a project funding proposal, identifying the environmental and social challenges your project will tackle and describing the MBS. A well-designed project funding proposal is useful to present your ideas and project aims in front of various audiences, including your boss, partners, stakeholders, and donors. A feasibility study should also be carried out to ascertain the likelihood of completing the project successfully. However, you may face the issue of funding to do that. Unless the targeted donor will cover the cost of the feasibility study, you may need to find another funding resource to cover this cost. You may have to consider accessing a readiness program or project development financing, which is usually like a small-scale investment to conduct a feasibility study. If you have funds for a feasibility study on your own or the donor will cover this cost, you can directly move on to the option of accessing international funds. As most climate change adaptation actions are localized, local governments and stakeholders need to be fully engaged throughout the processes that are appropriate for the local context. Ensure that all local stakeholders are fully empowered to participate in the implementation, as their buy-in may be essential for the long-term sustainability of MBS measures long after a specific project is implemented. Likewise, mainstreaming the gender perspective is also crucial in the process of project development. Here's a list of questions to help you prepare your project proposal and its expected impact on relevant audiences. What problem are you trying to solve? Will your project increase your revenue or reduce your costs? How much investment is needed to make it happen? Is it forming part of an ongoing business or is it a new initiative? Are other players also seeking to address the same problem? What are the social and environmental impacts of the project? Do you have clear, reasonable, and measurable goals and identifiable out outcomes? Are there any potential negative side effects? If yes, how are you taking them into account? Make sure you have a clear answer to these questions before you propose a project inside and outside of your institution. This map shows funding resources for your project. If you are considering a completely new and small scale establishment project or enterprise, look at startup financing. There are several small grant programs provided by NGOs at both the global and local level. Philanthropists or public sectors will accelerate projects without mature technologies or a new and innovative concept. You can also access this financing for your feasibility studies. If your project is proven and mature to some extent, commercial financing should be an, another option. 
Private companies have been increasingly diversifying financial instruments for nature-based projects such as green bonds, and this is also true of local financial institutions such as banks. Multilateral development funds could be the largest donors. You should ensure a project is able to be financed or well aligned with global agendas such as the Sustainable Development Goals, the Paris Agreement, or the Sendai Framework. Finally, there are an increasing number of dedicated funding instruments like the Nature Plus Accelerator Fund by IUCN, as well as some blended funds offered by private companies and governments. We will be adding later to this online course Step 3, Implementation, and Step 4, Monitoring and Evaluation, so stay tuned. Okay, with this, we reach the end of this video lesson on the four-step process to use MBS in your project development. So what were those steps? The first was planning, second was financing, the third was implementation, and the fourth was evaluation. You have now learned about the process and also studied cases and examples of communities that have successfully applied MBS. Now it's your turn to take this knowledge and start planning and implementing your own MBS in your policy area and your community.